The National Association of Social Workers, NASW, Code of Ethics. Preamble. The primary mission of the social work profession is to enhance human well-being and help meet basic human needs of all people with particular attention to the needs and empowerment of people who are vulnerable, oppressed, and living in poverty. A historic and defining feature of social work is the profession's focus on individual well-being in a social context and the well-being of society. Fundamental to social work is attention to the environmental focus forces that create, contribute to, and address problems in living. Social workers promote social justice and social change with and on behalf of clients. Clients, quote unquote, is used inclusively to refer to individuals, families, groups, organizations, and communities. Social workers are sensitive to cultural and ethnic diversity and strive to end discrimination, oppression, poverty, and other forms of social injustice. These activities may be in the form of direct practice, community organizing, supervision, consultation, administration, advocacy, social and political action, policy development and implementation, education and research and evaluation. Social workers seek to enhance the capacity of people to address their own needs. Social workers also seek to promote the responsiveness of organizations, communities, and other social institutions to individuals' needs and social problems. The mission of the social work profession is rooted in a set of core values. These core values, embraced by social workers throughout the profession's history, are the foundation of social work's unique purpose and perspective. Service, social justice, dignity and worth of the person, importance of human relationships, integrity, and competence. This constellation of core values reflects what is unique to the social work profession. Core values and the principles that flow from them must be balanced within the context and complexity of the human experience. The purpose of the NASW Code of Ethics. Professional ethics are at the core of social work. The profession has an obligation to articulate its basic values, ethical principles, and ethical standards. The NASW Code of Ethics sets forth these values, principles, and standards to guide social workers' conduct. The code is relevant to all social work, to all social workers and social work students, regardless of their professional function, the settings in which they work, or the populations they serve. The NASW Code of Ethics serves six purposes. One, the code identifies core values on which social work's mission is based. Two, the code summarizes broad ethical principles that reflect the profession's core values and establishes a set of specific ethical standards that should be used to guide social work practice. Three, the code is designed to help social workers identify relevant considerations when professional obligations conflict or ethical uncertainties arise. Four, the code provides ethical standards to which the general public can hold the social work profession accountable. Five, the code socializes practitioners new to the field to social work's mission, values, ethical principles, and ethical standards. Six, the code articulates standards that the social work professional itself can use to assess whether social workers have engaged in unethical conduct. NASW has formal procedures to adjudicate ethics complaints filed against its members. In subscribing to this code, social workers are required to cooperate in its implementation, participate in NASW adjudication proceedings, and abide by any NSW disciplinary rulings or sanctions based on it. The code offers a set of values, principles, and standards to guide decision-making and, con and conduct when ethical issues arise. It does not provide a set of rules that prescribe how social workers should act in all situations. Specific applications of the code must take into account the context in which it is being considered and the possibility of conflicts among the code's values, principles, and ethical standards. 
ethical responsibilities flow from all human relationships, from the personal and familial to the social and professional. Further, the NASW Code of Ethics does not specify which values, principles, and standards are most important and ought to outweigh others in instances when they conflict. Reasonable differences of opinion can and do exist among social workers with respect to the ways in which values, ethical principles, and ethical standards should be ranked, rank ordered when they conflict. Ethical decision making in a given situation must apply the informed judgment of the individual social worker and should also consider how the issues would be judged in a peer review process where the ethical standards of the profession would be applied. Ethical decision making is a process. There are many instances in social work where simple answers are not available to resolve complex ethical issues. Social workers should take into consideration all the values, principles, and standards in this code that are relevant to any situation in which ethical judgment is warranted. Social workers' decisions and actions should be con consistent with the spirit as well as the letter of this code. In addition to this code, there are many other sources of information about ethical thinking that may be useful. Social workers should consider ethical theory and principles generally. Social work theory and research, laws, regulations, agency policies, and other relevant codes of ethics recognizing that among codes of ethics, social workers should consider the NASW code of ethics as their primary source. Social workers also should be aware of the impact on ethical decision-making of their clients and their own personal values and cultural and religious beliefs and practices. They should be aware of any conflicts between personal and professional values and deal with them responsibly. For additional guidance, social workers should consult the relevant literature on professional ethics and ethical decision-making and seek appropriate consultation when faced with ethical dilemmas. This may involve consultation with an agency-based or social work organization's ethics committee, a regulatory body, knowledgeable colleagues, supervisors, or legal counsel. Instances may arise when social workers' ethical obligations conflict with agency policies or relevant laws or regulations. When such conflicts occur, social workers must make a re reasonable, make, must make a responsible effort to resolve the conflict in a manner that is consistent with the values, principles, and standards expressed in this code. If a reasonable resolution of the conflict does not appear possible, social workers should seek proper consultation before making a decision. The NASW Code of Ethics is to be used by NASW and by individuals, organizations, and bodies, such as licensing and regulatory boards, professional liability insurance providers, courts of law, agency boards of directors, government agencies, and other professional groups that choose to adopt it or use it as a frame of reference. Violations of standards in this code does not automatically imply legal liability or violation of the law. Such determination can only be made in the context of legal and judicial proceedings. Alleged violations of the code would be subject to a peer review process. Such processes are gener generally separate from legal or administrative procedures and insulated from legal review or proceedings to allow the profession to counsel and discipline its own members. A code of ethics cannot guarantee ethical behavior. Moreover, a code of ethics cannot resolve all ethical issues or disputes or capture the richness and complexity involved in striving to make responsible choices within a moral community. Rather, a code of ethics sets forth values, ethical principles, and ethical standards to which professionals aspire and by which their actions can be judged. Social workers' ethical behavior should result from their personal commitment to engage in ethical practice. The NASW Code of Ethics reflects the commitment of all social workers to uphold the profession's values and to act ethically. Principles and standards must be applied by individuals of good character who discern moral questions and, in good faith, seek to make reliable ethical judgments. Ethical Principles The following broad ethical principles are based on social work's core values of service, social justice, dignity and worth of the person, importance of human relationships, integrity, and competence. 
These principles set forth ideals to which all social workers should aspire. Value, service, ethical principle. Social workers' primary goal is to help people in need and to address social problems. Social workers elevate service to others above self-interest. Social workers draw on their knowledge, values, and skills to help people in need and to address social problems. Social workers are encouraged to volunteer some portion of their professional skills with no expectation of significant financial return. Pro bono service. Value social justice. Ethical principle. Social workers challenge social injustice. Social workers pursue social change, particularly with and on behalf of vulnerable and oppressed individuals and groups of people. Social workers' social, social change efforts are focused primarily on issues of poverty, unemployment, discrimination, and other forms of social injustice. These activities seek to promote sensitivity to and knowledge about oppression and cultural and ethnic diversity. Social workers strive to ensure access to needed information, services, and resources, <clears throat> equality of opportunity, and meaningful participation in decision-making for all people. The value, dignity, and worth of the person, ethical principle. Social workers respect the inherent dignity and worth of the person. Social workers treat each person in a caring and respectful fashion mindful of individual differences in cultural and ethnic diversity. Social workers promote clients' social, socially responsible self-determination. Social workers seek to enhance clients' capacity and opportunity to change and to address their own needs. Social workers are cognizant of their dual responsibility to clients' interests and the broader society's interests in a socially responsible manner, consistent with the values, ethical principles, and ethical standards of the profession. Value, importance of human relationships, ethical principle. Social workers recognize the central importance of human relationships. Social workers understand that relationships between and among people are an important vehicle for change. Social workers engage people as partners in the helping process. Social workers seek to strengthen relationships among people in a purposeful effort to promote, restore, maintain, and enhance the well-being of individuals, families, social groups, organizations, and communities. Value, integrity, ethical principle. Social workers behave in a trustworthy manner. Social workers are continually aware of the profession's mission, values, ethical principles, and ethical standards and practice in a manner consistent with them. Social workers act honestly and responsibly and promote ethical practices on the part of the organization with which they are affiliated. Value competence, ethical principle. Social workers practice within their areas of competence and develop and enhance their professional expertise. Social workers continually strive to increase their professional knowledge and skills and to apply them in practice. Social workers should aspire to contribute to the knowledge base of the profession. Ethical standards. The following ethical standards are relevant to the professional activities of all social workers. These standards concern, one, social workers' ethical responsibilities to clients, two, social workers' ethical responsibilities to colleagues, three, social workers' ethical responsibilities in practice settings, four, ethical, sorry, four, social workers' ethical responsibilities as professionals, five, social workers' ethical responsibilities to the social work profession, and six, social workers' ethical responsibilities to the broader society. Some of the standards that follow are enforceable guidelines for professional conduct, and some are aspirational. The extent to which each standard is enforceable is a matter of professional judgment to be exercised by those responsible for reviewing alleged violations of ethical standards. One, social workers' ethical responsibilities to clients. 1.01, commitment to clients. Social workers' re primary responsibility is to promote the well-being of clients. In general, clients' interests are primary. However, social workers' responsibility to 
the larger society or specific legal obligations may on limited occasions supersede the loyalty owed clients, and clients should be so advised. Examples include when a social worker is required by law to report that a client has abused a child or has threatened to harm self or others. 1.02, self-determination. Social workers respect and promote the right of clients to self-determination and assist clients in their efforts to identify and clarify their goals. Social workers may limit clients' right to self-determination when, in the social worker's professional judgment, clients' actions or potential actions pose a serious, foreseeable, and imminent risk to themselves or others. 1.03, informed consent. A. Social workers should provide services to clients only in the context of a professional relationship based, when appropriate, on valid informed consent. Social workers should use clear and understandable language to inform clients of the purpose of the services, risks related to the services, limits to services because of the requirements of a third party payer, relevant costs, reasonable alternatives, client's right to refuse or withdraw consent, and the time frame covered by the consent. Social workers should provide clients with an opportunity to ask questions. In instances when clients are not literate or have difficulty, this is B. In instances where clients are not literate or have difficulty understanding the primary language used in the practice setting, social workers should take steps to encourage clients' comprehension. This may include providing clients with a detailed verbal explanation, or arranging for a qualified interpreter or translator whenever possible. C, in instances when clients lack the capacity to provide informed consent, social workers should protect clients' interests by seeking permission from an appropriate third party, informing clients consistent with the client's level of understanding. In such instances, social workers should seek to ensure that the third party acts in a manner consistent with clients' wishes and interests. Social workers should take reasonable steps to enhance such clients' ability to give form informed consent. D, in instances when clients are receiving services involuntarily, social workers should provide information about the nature and extent of services and about the extent of clients' right to refuse service. E, Social workers who provide services via electronic media, such as computer, telephone, radio, television, should inform recipients of the limitations and risks associated with such services. F. Social workers should obtain clients' informed consent before audio taping or videotaping clients or permitting observation of clients, observation of services to clients by a third party. 1.04. Competence. A. Social workers should provide services and represent themselves as competent only within the boundaries of their education, training, license, certification, consultation received, supervised experience, or other relevant professional experience. B. Social workers should provide services in substantive areas or use intervention techniques or approaches that are new to them only after engaging in appropriate study, training, consultation, and supervision from people who are competent in those interventions or techniques. C, when generally recognized standards do not exist with respect to an emerging area of practice, social workers should exercise careful judgment and take responsible steps, including appropriate education, research, training, consultation, and supervision to ensure the competence of their work and to protect clients from harm. 1.05, cultural competence and social diversity. Social workers should understand culture and its function in human behavior in society, recognizing the strengths that exist in all cultures. B, social workers should have a knowledge base of their clients' cultures and be able to demonstrate competence in the provision of services that are sensitive to clients' cultures and to differences among people and cultural groups. C, Social workers should obtain education about and seek to understand the nature of social diversity and oppression with respect to race, ethnicity, national origin, color, sex, sexual orientation, age, marital status, political belief, religion, and mental or physical disability. 1.06 Conflicts 
of interest. A. Social workers should be alert to and avoid conflicts of interest that interfere with the exercise of professional discretion and impartial judgment. Social workers should inform clients when real or potential conflict of interest arises and take reasonable steps to resolve the issue in a manner that makes clients' interests primary and protects clients' interests to the greatest extent possible. In some cases, protecting clients' interests may require termination of the professional relationship with proper referral of the client. B. Social workers should not take unfair advantage of any professional relationship or exploit others to further their personal, religious, political, or business interests. C. Social workers should not engage in dual or multiple relationships with clients or formal client, former clients in which there is a risk of exploitation or potential harm to the client. In instances when dual or multiple relationships are unavoidable, social workers should take steps to protect clients and are responsible for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries. Dual or multiple relationships occur when social workers relate to clients in more than one relationship, whether professional, social, or business. Dual or multiple relationships can occur simultaneously or consecutively. D. When social workers provide services to two or more people who have a relationship with each other, for example, couples, family members, social workers should clarify with all parties which individuals would be considered clients and the nature of social workers' professional obligations to the various individuals who are receiving services. Social workers who anticipate a conflict of interest among the individuals receiving services or who anticipate having to perform in potentially conflicting roles, for example, when a social worker is asked to testify in a child custody dispute or divorce proceeding involving clients, should clarify their role with the parties involved and take appropriate action to minimize any conflict of interest. 1.07, privacy and confidentiality. A, social workers should respect clients' right to privacy. Social workers should not solicit private information from clients unless it is essential to providing services or conducting social work evaluation or research. Once private information is shared, standards of confidentiality apply. B. Social workers may disclose confidential information when appropriate with valid consent from a client or a person legally authorized to consent on behalf of a client. C. Social workers should protect the confidentiality of all information obtained in the course of professional service, except for compelling professional reasons. The general expectation that social workers will keep information confidential does not apply when disclosure, when disclosure is necessary to prevent serious, foreseeable, and imminent harm to a client or other, or other identifiable person or when laws or regulations require disclosure without a client's consent. In all instances, social workers should disclose the least amount of confidential information necessary to achieve the desired purpose. Only information that is directly relevant to the purpose for which the disclosure is made should be revealed. D. Social workers should inform clients, to the extent possible, about the disclosure of confidential information and the potential consequences. When, for, when feasible, before the disclosure is made. This applies whether social workers disclose confidential information on the basis of a legal requirement or client consent. E, social workers should discuss with clients and other interested parties the nature of confidentiality and limitations of clients' right to confidentiality. Social workers should review with clients circumstances where confidential information may be requested and where disclosure of confidential information may be legally required. This discussion should occur as soon as possible in the social worker-client relationship and as needed throughout the course of the relationship. F. When social workers provide counseling services to families, couples, or groups, social workers should seek agreement among the parties involved concerning each individual's right to confidentiality and obligation to preserve the confidentiality of information shared by others. Social workers should inform participants in families, couples, or group counseling that social workers cannot guarantee that all participants will honor such agreements. Social workers should inform clients involved in family, couples, marital, or group counseling, this is G, 
of the social workers, employers, and agencies policy concerning the social workers' disclosure of confidential information among the parties involved in the counseling. H, social workers should not disclose confidential information to third-party payers unless clients have authorized such disclosure. I, social workers should not discuss confidential information in any setting unless privacy can be ensured. Social workers should not discuss confidential information in public or semi-public areas such as hallways, waiting rooms, elevators, and restaurants. J. Social workers should protect the confidentiality of clients during legal proceedings to the extent permitted by the law. When a court of law or other legally authorized body orders social workers to disclose confidential or privileged information without a client's consent and such disclosure could cause harm to the client. Social workers should request that the court withdraw the order or limit the order as narrowly as possible or maintain the records under seal, unavailable for public inspection. K, social workers should protect the confidentiality of clients when responding to requests from members of the media. L, Social workers should protect the confidentiality of clients, written and electronic records, and other sensitive information. Social workers should take reasonable steps to ensure that clients' records are stored in a secure location and that clients' records are not available to others who are not authorized to have access. M. Social workers should take precautions to ensure and maintain the confidentiality of information transmitted to other parties through the use of computers, electronic mail, facsimile machines, telephones and telephone answering machines, and other electronic or computer technology. Disclosure of identifying information should be avoided whenever possible. N, social workers should transfer or dispose of clients' records in a manner that protects clients' confidentiality and is consistent with state statutes, statutes governing records and social work licensure. O, social work should take res social workers should take reasonable precautions to protect client confidentiality in the event of the social worker's termination of practice, incapacitation, or death. P, social workers should not disclose identifying information when discussing clients for teaching or training purposes unless the client has consented to disclosure of confidential information. Q. Social workers should not disclose identifying information when discussing clients with consultants unless the client has consented to disclosure of confidential information or there is a compelling need for such disclosure. R. Social workers should protect the confidentiality of deceased clients consistent with the preceding standards. 1.08. Access to records. A. Social workers should provide clients with reasonable access to records concerning the client. Social workers who are concerned that clients' access to their records could cause serious misunderstanding or harm to the client should provide assistance in interpreting the records and consultation with the client regarding the records. Social workers should limit clients' access to their records or portions of their records only in exceptional circumstances where there is compelling evidence that such access would cause serious harm to the client. Both clients' requests and the rationale for withholding some or all of the records should be documented in clients' files. B, when providing clients with access to their records, social workers should take steps to protect the confidentiality of other individuals identified or discussed in such records. 1.09, sexual relationships. A, Social workers should undergo, should under no circumstances engage in sexual activities or sexual contact with current clients, whether such contact is consensual or forced. B, social workers should not engage in sexual activities or sexual contact with clients' relatives or other individuals with whom clients maintain a close personal relationship when there is a risk of exploitation or potential harm to the client. Sexual activity or sexual contact with clients' relatives or other individuals with whom clients maintain a personal relationship has the potential to be harmful to the client and may make it difficult for the social worker and client to maintain appropriate professional boundaries. Social workers, not their clients, 
their client's relatives, or other individuals with whom the client maintains a personal relationship assume the full burden for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries. C. Social workers should not engage in sexual activities or sexual contact with former clients because of the potential for harm to the client. If social workers engage in conduct contrary to this prohibition or claim that an exception to this prohibition is warranted because of extraordinary circumstances, it is social workers, not their clients, who assume the full burden of demonstrating that the former, former client has not been exploited, coerced, or manipulated intentionally or unintentionally. D, social workers should not provide clinical services to individuals with whom they have had a prior sexual relationship. Providing clinical services to a former sexual partner has the potential to be harmful to the individual and is likely to make it difficult for the social worker and individual to maintain appropriate professional boundaries. 1.10 physical contact. Social workers should not engage in physical contact with clients when there is a possibility of psychological harm to the client as a result of the contact, such as cradling or caressing clients. Social workers who engage in appropriate physical contact with clients are responsible for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries that govern such physical contact. 1.11 sexual harassment. Social workers should not sexually harass clients. Sexual harassment includes sexual advances, sexual solicitation, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physically, physical conduct of a sexual nature. 1.12, derogatory language. Social workers should not use derogatory language in their written or verbal communications to or about clients. Social workers should use accurate and respectful language in all communications to and about clients. 1.13, payment for services. When setting fees, social workers should ensure that the fees are fair, reasonable, and commensurate with the service performed. Consideration should be given to clients' ability to pay. B, social workers should avoid accepting goods or services from clients as payment for professional services. Bartering arrangements, particularly involving services, create the potential for conflicts of interest, exploitation, and inappropriate boundaries in social workers' relationships with clients. Social workers should explore and may participate in bartering only in very limited circumstances when it can be demonstrated that such arrangements are an accepted practice among professionals in the local community considered to be essential for the provision of services, negotiated without coercion, and entered, entered into at the client's initiative and with the client's informed consent. Social workers who accept goods or services from clients as payment for, for, for professional services assume the full burden of demonstrating that this arrangement will not be detrimental to the client or the professional relationship. C. Social workers should not solicit a private fee or other remuneration. Sorry. Social workers should not solicit a private fee or other remuneration for providing services to clients who are entitled to such available services through the social worker's employment employer or agency. 1.14. Clients who lack decision-making capacity. When social workers act on behalf of clients who lack the capacity to make informed decisions, social workers should take reasonable steps to safeguard the interests and rights of those clients. 1.15, interruption of services. Social workers should make reasonable efforts to ensure continu continuity of services in the event that services are interrupted by factors such as unavailability, relocation, illness, disability, or death. 1.16, Termination of services. A. Social workers should terminate services to clients and professional relationships with them when such services and relationships are no longer required or no longer serve the client's needs or interests. B. Social workers should take re reasonable steps to avoid abandoning clients who are still in need of services. Social workers should withdraw services precipitously only under unusual circumstances giving careful consideration to all factors in the situation, 
and taking care to minimize possible adverse effects. Social workers should assist in making appropriate arrangements for, con for continuation of services when necessary. C. Social workers in fee-for-service settings may terminate services to clients who are not paying an overdue balance if the financial contractual arrangements have been made clear to the client, if the client does not pose an imminent danger to self or others, and if the client and other consequences of the current non-payment have been addressed and discussed with the client, and if the clinical and other consequences of the current non-payment have been addressed and discussed with the client. D, social workers should not terminate services to pursue a social, financial, or sexual relationship with a client. E, social workers who anticipate the termination or interruption of services to clients should notify clients promptly and seek the transfer, referral, or continuation of services in relation to the client's needs and preferences. F, social workers who are leaving an employment setting should inform clients of appropriate options for the continuation of services and of the benefits and risks of the option. Two, social workers' ethical responsibilities to colleagues. 2.01, respect. A, social workers should treat colleagues with respect and should represent accurately and fairly the qualifications, views, and obligations of colleagues. B, social workers should avoid unwarranted negative criticism of colleagues and communications with clients or with other professionals. Unwarranted negative criticism may include demeaning comments that refer to colleagues' level of competence or to individuals' attributes, such as race, ethnicity, national origin, color, sex, sexual orientation, age, marital status, political belief, religion, and mental or physical disability. C, social workers should cooperate with social work colleagues and with colleagues of other professions when such cooperation services the well-being of clients. 2.02, .02, confidentiality. Social workers should respect confidential information shared by colleagues in the course of their professional relationships and transactions. Social workers should ensure that such colleagues understand social workers' obligations to respect confidentiality and any exceptions related to it. 2.03, interdisciplinary co collaboration. A, social workers who are members of an interdisciplinary team should participate in and contribute to decisions that affect the well-being of clients. The well-being of clients by drawing on the perspectives, values, and experiences of the social work profession. Professional and ethical obligations of the interdisciplinary team as a whole and of its individual members should be clearly established. B. Social workers for whom a team decision raises ethical concerns should attempt to resolve the disagreement through appropriate channels. If the disagreement cannot be resolved, social workers should pursue other avenues to address their concerns consistent with the client's well-being. 2.04, disputes involving colleagues. A, social workers should not take advantage of a dispute between a colleague and an employer to obtain a position or otherwise advance the social worker's own interests. B, social workers should not exploit clients in disputes with colleagues or engage clients in any inappropriate discussion of conflicts between social workers and their colleagues. 2.05, consultation. A, social workers should seek the advice and counsel of colleagues whenever such consultation is in the best interest, best interest of clients. B, social workers should keep themselves informed about colleagues' areas of expertise and competencies. Social workers should seek consultation only from colleagues who have demonstrated knowledge, expertise, and competence related to the subject of the consultation. C. When consulting with colleagues about clients, social workers should disclose the least amount of information necessary to achieve the purposes of the consultation. 2.06. Referral for services. A. Social workers should refer clients to other professionals when the other professional specialized knowledge or expertise is needed to service clients fully or when social workers believe that they are not being effective or making reasonable progress with clients and that additional service is required. B. 
Social workers who refer clients to other professionals should take appropriate steps to facilitate an orderly transfer of responsibility. Social workers who refer clients to other professionals should disclose, with client's consent, all pertinent information to the new service providers. C. Social workers are prohibited from giving or receiving payment for a referral when no professional service is provided by the referring social worker. 2.07 Sexual Relationships Social workers who function as supervisors or educators should not engage in sexual activities or contact with supervisees, students, trainees, or other colleagues over whom they exercise professional authority. B. Social workers should avoid engaging in sexual relationships with colleagues when there's potential for a conflict of interest. Social workers who become involved in or anticipate becoming involved in a sexual relationship with a colleague have a duty to transfer professional responsibilities when necessary to avoid a conflict of interest. 2.08, sexual harassment. Social workers should not sexually harass supervisees, students, trainees, or colleagues. Sexual harassment includes sexual advances, sexual solicitation, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. 2.09, impairment of colleagues. A, social workers who have direct knowledge of a social work colleague's impairment that is due to personal problems, psychosocial distress, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties, and that interferes with practice effectiveness should consult with that colleague when feasible and assist the colleague in taking remedial action. B, social workers who believe that a social work colleague's impairment interferes with practice effectiveness and that the colleague has not taken adequate steps to address the impairment should take action through appropriate channels established by employers, agencies, NASW, licensing and regulatory bodies, and other professional organizations. 2.10, incompetence of colleagues. A, social workers who have direct knowledge of a social work colleague's incompetence should consult with that colleague when feasible and assist the colleague in taking remedial action. B, social workers who believe that a social work colleague is incompetent and has not taken adequate steps to address the incompetence should take action through appropriate channels established by employers, agencies, NASW, licensing and regulatory bodies and other professional organizations. 2.11, unethical conduct of colleagues. A, social workers should take adequate measures to discourage, prevent, expose, and correct the unethical conduct of colleagues. B, social workers should be knowledgeable about established policies and procedures for handling concerns about colleagues' unethical behavior. Social workers should be familiar with national, state, and local procedures for handling ethics complaints. These, these include policies and procedures created by NASW, licensing and regulatory bodies, employers, agencies, and other professional organizations. C. Social workers who believe that a colleague has acted unethically should seek resolution by discussing their concerns with the colleague when feas feasible and when such discussion is likely to be productive. D, when necessary, social workers who believe that a colleague has acted unethically should take action through appropriate formal channels, such as contacting a state licensing board or regulatory body, an NASW committee on inquiry, or other professional ethics committees. E, social workers should defend and assist colleagues who are unjustly charged with unethical conduct. Three, social workers' ethical responsibilities in practice settings. 3.01, Supervision and Consultation. A, social workers who provide supervision or consultation should have the necessary knowledge and skill to supervise or consult appropriately and should do so only within their areas of knowledge and competence. B, social workers who provide supervision or consultation are responsible for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries. C, social workers should not engage in any dual or multiple relationships with supervisees in which there is a risk of exploitation of or potential harm to the supervisee. D, social workers who provide supervision should evaluate supervisees' performance in a manner that is fair and respectful. 3.02, 
Education and Training. A. Social workers who function as educators, field instructors for students, or trainers should provide instruction only within their areas of knowledge and competence, and should provide instruction based on the most current information and knowledge available in the profession. B. Social workers who function as educators or field instructors for students should evaluate students' performance in a manner that is fair and respectful. C. Social workers who function as educators or field instructors for students should take reasonable steps to ensure clients are routinely informed when services are being provided by students. D. Social workers who function as educators or field instructors for students should not engage in any dual or multiple relationships with students in which there is a risk of exploitation or potential harm to the student. Social work educators and field instructors are responsible for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries. 3.03, performance evaluation. Social workers who have responsibility for evaluating the performance of others should fulfill such responsibility in a fair and considerate manner and on the basis of clearly stated criteria. 3.04, client records. A, social workers should take responsible should take reasonable steps to ensure that documentation and records is accurate and reflects the services provided. B, social workers should include sufficient and timely documentation and records to facilitate the delivery of services and to ensure continuity of services provided to clients in the future. C, social workers' documentation should protect clients' privacy to the extent that is possible and appropriate and should include only information that is directly relevant to the delivery of services. D. Social workers should store records following the, following the termination of services to ensure reasonable future access. Records should be maintained for the number of years required by state statutes or relevant contracts. 3.05. Billing. Social workers should establish and maintain billing practices that accurate, accurately reflect the nature and extent of services provided and that identify who provided the service in the practice setting. 3.06, client transfer. A, when an individual who is receiving services from another agency or colleague contacts a social worker for services, the social worker should carefully consider the client's needs before agreeing to provide services. To minimize possible confusion and conflict, social workers should discuss with potential clients the nature of the client's current relationship with other service providers and the impl implications, including possible benefits or risks, of entering into a relationship with a new service provider. B. If a new client has been served by another agency or colleague, social workers should discuss with the client whether consultation with the previous service provider is in the client's best interest. 3.07, Administration. A, social work administrators should advocate within and outside their agencies for adequate resources to meet clients' needs. B, social workers should advocate for resource allocation procedures that are open and fair. When not all clients' needs can be met, an allocation procedure should be developed that is non-discriminatory and based on appropriate and consistently applied principles. C, Social workers who, who are administrators should take reasonable steps to ensure that adequate agency or organizational resources are available to provide appropriate staff supervision. D. Social work administrators should take reasonable steps to ensure that the working environment for which they are responsible is consistent with and encourages compliance with the NASW Code of Ethics. Social work administrators should take reasonable steps to eliminate any conditions in their organizations that violate, interfere with, or, or discourage compliance with the code. 3.08, continuing education and staff development. Social work administrators and supervisors should take reasonable steps to provide or arrange for continuing education staff and staff development for all staff for whom they are responsible. Continuing education and staff development should address current knowledge and emerging developments related to social work practice and ethics. 3.09, commitments to employers. A, social workers generally should adhere to commitments made to employers and employing organizations. 
B, social workers should work to improve employing agencies' policies and procedures and the efficiency and effectiveness of their service. C, social workers should take reasonable steps to ensure that employee, employers are aware of social workers' ethical obligations as set forth in the NASW Code of Ethics and of the, impl and of the implications of those obligations for social work practice. D, social workers should not allow an employing organization's policies, procedures, regulations, or administrative orders to interfere with their ethical practice of social work. Social workers should take reasonable steps to ensure that their employing organization's practices are consistent with the NASW Code of Ethics. E, social workers should act to prevent and eliminate discrimination in the employing organization's work assignment and in its employment policies and practices. F, social workers should accept employment or arrange student field placements only in organizations that exercise fair personnel practices. G, social workers should be diligent stewards of the resources of their employing organizations, wisely conserving funds where appropriate and never misappropriating funds or using them for unintended purposes. 3.10 labor management disputes. A, social workers may engage in organized action, including the formation of and participation in labor unions to improve client, to improve services to clients and working conditions. B, the actions of social workers who are involved in labor management disputes, job actions, or labor strikes should be guided by the profession's values, ethical principles, and ethical standards. Reasonable differences of opinion exist among social workers concerning their primary obligation as professionals during an actual or threatened labor strike or job action. Social workers should carefully examine relevant issues and their possible impact on clients before deciding on a course of action. Four, social workers' ethical responsibilities as professionals. 4.01, competence. A, social workers should accept responsibility or employment only on the basis of existing competence or the intention to acquire the necessary competence. B, social workers should strive to become and remain proficient in professional practice and the performance of professional functions. Social workers should critically examine and keep current with emerging knowledge relevant to social work. Social workers should routinely review the professional, the professional literature and participate in continuing education relevant to social work practice and social work ethics. 4.02, discrimination. Social workers should not practice, condone, facilitate, or collaborate with any form of discrimination on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, color, sex, sexual orientation, age, marital status, political belief, religion, or mental or physical disability. 4.03, private conduct. Social workers should not permit their private conduct to interfere with their ability to fulfill their professional responsibilities. 4.04, .04, dishonesty, fraud, and deception. Social workers should not participate in, condone, or be associated with dishonesty, fraud, or deception. 4.05, impairment. A, social workers should not allow their own personal problems, psychosocial distress, legal problems, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties to interfere with their professional judgment and performance, or to jeopardize the best interests of people for whom they have a professional responsibility. B, social workers whose personal problems, psycho psychosocial distress, legal problems, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties interfere with their professional judgment and performance should immediately seek consultation and take appropriate remedial action by seeking professional help, making adjustments in workload, terminating practice, or taking any other steps necessary to protect clients and others. 4.06, misrepresentation. A, social workers should make clear distinctions between statements made and actions engaged in as a private individual and as a representation of the social work profession, the professional social work organization or the social workers employing agency. B, social workers who speak on behalf of professional social work organizations should accurately represent the official and authorized positions of the organizations. C, 
Social workers should ensure that their representations to clients, agencies, and the public of professional qualifications, credentials, education, competence, affiliations, services, provided or results to be achieved are accurate. Social workers should claim only those relevant professional credentials they actually possess and take steps to correct any inaccuracies or misrepresentations of their credentials by others. 4.07, solicitations. A, social workers should not engage in uninvited solicitation of potential clients who, because of their circumstances, are vulnerable to undue influence, manipulation, or coercion. B, social workers should not engage in solicitation of testimonial endorsements, including solicitation of consent to use a client's prior statement as a testimonial endorsement of their particular circumstances are vulnerable to due influence. 4.08, acknowledging credit. A, social workers should take responsibility and credit, including authorship credit, only for work they have actually performed and to which they have contributed. B, social workers should honestly acknowledge the work of and the contributions made by others. Five, social workers' ethical responsibilities to the social work profession. 5.01, integrity of the profession. A, social workers should work toward the maintenance and promotion of high standards of practice. B, social workers should uphold and advance the ethics, the values, ethics, knowledge, and mission of the profession. Social workers should protect, enhance, and improve the integrity of the profession through appropriate study and research, active discussion, and responsible criticism of the profession. C. Social workers should contribute time and professional expertise to activities that promote respect for the value, integrity, and competence of the social work profession. These activities may include teaching, research, consultation, service, legislative testimony, presentations in the community, and participation in their professional organization. D, social workers should contribute to the knowledge base of social work and share with colleagues their knowledge related to practice, research, and ethics. Social workers should seek to contribute to the profession's literature and to share their knowledge at professional meetings and conferences. E, social workers should act to prevent the unauthorized and unqualified practice of social work. 5.02, Evaluation and Research. A, social workers should monitor and evaluate policies, the implementation of programs and practice interventions. B, social workers should promote and facilitate evaluation and research to contribute to the development of knowledge. C, social workers should critically examine and keep current with emerging knowledge relevant to social work and fully use evaluation and research evidence in their professional practice. D, social workers engaged in evaluation or research should carefully consider possible consequences and should follow guidelines developed for the protection of evaluation and research participants. Appropriate institutional review boards should be consulted. E, social workers engaged in evaluation or research should obtain voluntary and written informed consent from participants, when appropriate, without any implied or actual deprivation or penalty for refusal to participate, without undue inducement to participate, and with due regard for participants' well-being, privacy, and dignity. Informed consent should include information about the nature, extent, and duration of the participation requested, and disclosure of the risks and benefits of participation in the research. F, when evaluation, or research participants are incapable of giving informed consent, social workers should provide an appropriate explanation to the participants, obtain the participants' assent to the extent they are able, and obtain written consent from an appropriate proxy. G, social workers should never design or conduct evaluation or research that does not use con consent procedures, such as certain forms of naturalistic observation and archival research, unless rigorous, and responsible review of the research has found it to be justified because of its prospective scientific, educational, or applied value, and unless equally effective alternative procedures that do not involve waiver of consent are not feasible. H, social workers should inform participants of their right to withdraw from evaluation and research at any time without penalty. 
I, social workers should take appropriate steps to ensure that participants in evaluation and research have access to appropriate support services, supportive services. J, social workers engaged in evaluation or research should protect participants from unwarranted physical or mental distress, harm, danger, or deprivation. Social workers engaged in the evaluation of services should discuss collected information only for, only for professional purposes and only with people professionally concerned with this information. L, social workers engaged in evaluation or research should ensure the anonymity of confidentiality of participants and of the data obtained from them. Social workers should inform participants of any limits of confidentiality, the measures that will be taken to ensure confidentiality, and when any records containing research data will be destroyed. Social workers who report evaluation and research results should protect participants' confidentiality by omitting identifying information unless proper consent has been obtained, authorizing disclosure. N. Social workers should report evaluation and research findings accurately. They should not fabricate or falsify results and should take steps to correct any errors later found in published data using standard publication methods. O. Social workers engaged in evaluation or research should be alert to and avoid conflicts of interest and dual relationships with participants, should inform participants when a real or potential conflict of int interest arises, and should take steps to resolve the issue in a manner that makes participants' interests primary. P, social workers should educate themselves, their students, and their colleagues about responsible research practices. Six, social workers' ethical responsibilities to the broader society. 6.01, social welfare. Social workers should promote the general welfare of society from local to global levels and the development of people, their communities, and their environment. Social workers should advocate for living conditions conducive to the fulfillment of basic human needs and should promote social, economic, political, and cultural values and institutions that are compatible with the realization of social justice. 6.02, public participation. Social workers should facilitate informed participation by the public in shaping social policies and institutions. 6.03, public emergencies. Social workers should provide appropriate professional services in public emergencies to the greatest extent possible. 6.04, social and political action. A, social workers should engage in social and political action that seeks to ensure that all people have equal access to the resources employment, services, and opportunities they require to meet their basic human needs and to develop fully. Social workers should be aware of the impact of the political arena on practice and should advocate for changes in policy and legislation to improve social conditions in order to meet basic human needs and promote social justice. B, social workers should act to expand choice and opportunity for all people with special regard for vulnerable, disadvantaged, oppressed, and exploited people and groups. C, social workers should promote conditions that encourage respect for cultural and social diversity within the United States and globally. Social workers should promote policies and practices that demonstrate respect for difference, support the expansion of cultural knowledge and resources, advocate for programs and institutions that demonstrate cultural competence, and promote policies that safeguard the rights of and confirm equity and social justice for all people. D, social workers should act to prevent and eliminate domination of, exploitation of, and discrimination against any person, group, or class on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, color, sex, sexual orientation, age, marital status, political belief, religion, or mental or physical disability. And that's a wrap.